What child, what child, ladies and gentlemen? Now I'm back at you with some UFC 105. Um, this is a deceptively significant card. I'm, re I'm really looking forward to it. You know, face fur, you want know, to first thing I'm like, man, come on. Is that the best you can do? Well, it is. With all these injuries, man, it kind of is the best they can do. But I think it's a very, it's a deceptively significant card and a deceptively deep card. I think all these are some very important fights. You know, very, of course, very important to the fighters. I think they have some division implications. You know, of course, starting with the light heavyweight bout between uh, Randy Couture versus um, Brandon Truth Bear. You know, two small heavyweights that you know are making the move that made the move to light heavyweight. Uh, this is the second time around for Randy Couture. He's coming off a loss to um, you know two consecutive losses to Brock Lesnar and uh, Antonio Hadriga. Uh, yeah, Hadriga. I was about to say Algeria, but <laughs> Minotauro Nagar. Anyway, we'll talk more about Minotauro later. Anyway, he's coming off two straight losses. Brandon's coming off two straight wins at light heavyweight. Um, this is a, a very important fight because both these guys have a lot of questions about it. Randy's like, what, 58 years old or something? He's been doing this for a long time. He's looking great. He's fighting good, you know, but um, I think his window of opportunity kind of closed at lightweight or something. I think it may be a, not lightweight, but heavyweight. And, uh, you know, he's trying to make an impact at the, uh, at the light heavyweight division. Now, what I think made uh, Randy so good at, um, at heavyweight, not just his game planning and discipline, you know, his grappling and everything. I think, uh, you know, he had a lot of speed, you know, a lot of experience from just at a uh, heavyweight. The guys are a little bit slower, so, you know, it's like... So not everything's just lightning quick, fast twitch, you know, bah, 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 bah. you know, he can really, you know, think, you, you know, use his experience, use his intelligence, and use his plans to his, you know, to the best of his abilities. However, I think uh, when you make that move to light heavyweight, he's going to deal with the speed problem, you know. Can, you know, sure, he got the, he's got the mind for it, you know, he's, he worked hard, he's got the plan, he's going to go out there and do it, but can he get that punch off before someone lights him up, you know? And I, if anyone can do that, that's probably Brandon Vera. Um, that's probably how I see this fight going. But at the same time, Brandon Vera, he's had trouble pulling that trigger. He's had some very uninspired performances. His last fight was kind of boring. I mean, it was okay, but I think uh, it was just kind of frustrating. You know, it's like... He's, he's talking about like he's trying to finish him off with his hands when the kicks were doing just fine. They were doing their job, and he kind of went away from that. I mean, Christoph is walking around with his hand down, kind of a little bit, you know, just asking, "Hey, head kick me," but you know, nothing happened. Can Brandon Barra do what it takes to win? Because I know Randy's going to do everything it takes. He's going to go at you, but I can't say the same thing about B. You know, we don't know, but I think of. Uh, the problems that Randy's running into, not just, you know, fights, fighters are just physically better than him. I think he's running into a th he's running into a problem where guys are not going to be Tim Sylvia. They're not going to be Tito Ortiz or Chuck Liddell the first time. They're not going to underestimate him. Not that he won just because those guys underestimate him. He's obviously a great fighter. However, that's a weapon that him and his boy Forrest come and do. If you're not on your A game, they are. You know, if you're not there, they are. You know, they, they give themselves every opportunity to win. And that's, you know, something that a lot of people should, you know, imitate about them. They do what it takes to win. That's what makes them such a great fighter. That's what got them all those great wins. However, I think uh, this might be just Brandon Bear's day. Um, like I said, I'm not sure what he'll do. I'm not sure if he'll do it, but, you know, that's just my pick. I think um, he's going to be really focused because he really needs a signature win at light heavyweight, and I think he's more capable of getting it done than Randy Couture is beating him. We'll just have to see. Brandon Bear probably first or second round, I think. Um, what else are we looking at now? The co-main event is, of course, a welterweight eliminator title fight, or, you know, welterweight title eliminator fight with uh, Dan the Outlaw Hardy taking on Mike the Quick Swick. Now, this is supposed to be, a uh, you know, with, with Swick and Campman, but, uh, Swick had to pull out fight later. Um, Campman got destroyed by Semtex. And um, Dan Hardy's opponent, uh, Yoshihiko Yoshida, I think, was it Yoshi No, it wasn't Yoshida. It was Don Young Kim. Sorry about that, everybody. Not the Japanese, but the Korean. In any case, 
Dong Young Kim, the stun gun, he pulled out of that fight, which would have been a good fight. I would have liked to see that, you know. But, um, of course, it did not happen. So we're going to see Dan. He's going to make a little jump in the competition right here and take on uh, Mike Swick. Now, Swick, you know, Dan Hardy, you know, much, you know, he's known for, you know, having a big mouth. I think he, I love the kid, man. I think he has a great personality. I love hearing his promos. He's a well-spoken cat. And, you know, he's funny. He cracks me up. And, you know, he just has a good charisma. I think that's really great for the sport. I know. Please strike that from the record. I hate saying good, bad for the sport. I think it's such a corny thing to say. No offense to anyone who says it, but God damn, that's corny. I hate it. But I think uh, Dan Hardy, he really contributes to my entertainment experience. And, you know, I hope he wins. However, I think this is a bit of a jump for bro, you know? He should be working his way up a little bit. You know, be like one fight away from GSP. Now, I'm not sure he could take Swick, but I know he can't beat GSP. Nothing against my love and the death, but GSP right now, I think, is... Well, he, whoever's on, I think whoever's on the other side of this fight of GSP in the welterweight division is probably going to get crushed. But, that's a talk for another day. This is Mike Swick versus uh, Dan Hardy. Um, Dan Hardy, he's had uh, three fights in the UFC. He looked good, but not eh, all that good. You know, nothing super, you know, two split decisions and a knockout against the uh, unproven, you know, Roy Markham. But, um... I like his tie style. You know, I think it's, you know, gives him some great opportunity. I think he has a really good stand-up fight, however. And plus, but to detract again, he has a problem with letting the right hand down. I'm not, I have to check it again, but I think uh, he lets his hands down a lot, and that leaves openings. Mike Swick has good hand speed and can land that. If he can hurt him, then it's over, you know, with the machine gun funk. But... Then that's probably what I probably how see happen. I think there's just too many holes right now for Mike Swick, you know, to for Mike Swick to expose with Dan Hardy, and I don't see Dan Hardy getting the same with him. You know, I hope I like to be wrong because you know I really like Dan Hardy, but I got to pick Swick on this one. Mm, going down, we got um Michael the Count Bisping versus Dennis K. Um, this is a this should be a very good fight. I like both these guys. I mean, they're both very dynamic fighters. Dennis Kang's very good, very good on the ground, and um, Michael Bisping has some really good stand up. But he has good scrambles and everything. Um, he has been criticized for a long time for not having a whole lot of power, you know, and that's true. However, he's just not um. Not everybody has to be Chuck Liddell, but I like his stand up. Um, now. Dennis Kang is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. You know, he's really good top game and everything. He also has pretty good, um, you know, real good striking. Has pretty good, pretty good right hand. You know, he's knocks up people out sometimes. He has an up and down career right now. You know, he's had some ups and downs. He's lost some some inexplicable fights. You know, people wonder where his head's at. You know, same thing. You know, people are gonna wonder about Michael Bisping. Where's his head at after that knockout? But um. Like Bisping, he's another one of my favorite fighters. I don't know. I just like the Brits, man. <laughs> well, I hope he wins this fight, and I think he will. I think he's a little bit more put together in there than Kang. Uh, even though if Kang gets this to the ground, it could be a lot of problems. It, could, you know, yeah, this is a very hard card to call. You know, both none of these guys in this card they're not that proven to really get that definite like who win by, but. I'm pulling for Bisping on this one. I think he can pull it out against Kang. And, um, so you don't have a whole lot of room here. I think you got the, uh, the Ultimate Fighter winners from Britain they're, take, they're taking on. And it's, it's hard to see them winning their fights. I mean, they're not being fed like some of the early tough, you know, the early tough winners, man. They're getting thrown into the deep end with Matt Brown and Aaron Riley and everything. It's going to be, it's, if they can beat those guys, I'd be really impressed. I wasn't impressed with this season. But man, I was really, I'd be really impressed they could take these guys up, but I don't see that happening. And, um, you know, like I said, this should be a very, you know, so lots of scrappy fights, you know, lots of scrappy fighters. It should be very entertaining. I can't wait to see it, man. I'll highlight y'all a little bit, alright?